Today I'm bringing you guys part three of my Overland Tacoma build. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. It's been a few weeks now since you guys have seen the status of the Tacoma. I've been super busy with traveling and all sorts of different projects going on. Over the past month, my truck has been at Running for Tacos in Denver, Colorado, and they've been working their magic on it once again. We've added quite a lot of mods, this time focusing more on the performance side of things. Now, a lot of the parts that we've added to the build for this sort of like part three rendition of the truck, it's still in the break-in period. So I don't have any real world testing with the things that we've added to the truck yet, but from here, the truck is roughly sitting at about 85 to almost 90% complete. So for the rest of the fall and winter going into the spring, I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot more to the truck. And my videos of the truck from here until spring are gonna be a lot more trail oriented. We're gonna try to do some winter camping, although it's getting pretty cold here in Colorado. So to catch you guys up to speed, if you do not know anything about this truck, check out some of the videos linked up in the card. You can see part one and two. First part is where we did a lot of the suspension wheels, tires, and things like that. The second part of the build series were lighting, bumper, winch, and some recovery gear, some things like that. And now today we're kind of focusing on these performance mods that were added. Again, I still need to break in a lot of these new parts. And I'm going to be doing that in some upcoming trail videos here on the channel. So if you want to see all of that stuff, make sure you consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week. Now in no particular order, we're just gonna do sort of a rundown of the truck, some of the new things that I've added, my thoughts on them, why I did these mods to the truck. And if you guys have any questions on anything that you see here, or if you want to get some discount codes on these parts for yourself, make sure you check out my website. If you go to SciProductions.com slash SciGarage, you can find a full build sheet of the truck, all of my other vehicles, links to the different parts that I'm talking about, as well as discount codes to help save you guys some money. Now let's just start right up front with this next round of mods. We'll start from basically the front bumper and work our way back. So right up here in the front of the truck, the first thing that you guys will probably notice aesthetic wise is the snorkel. I decided to add a snorkel just like I did to the van, mainly for performance advantages. You're gonna get cleaner air from higher up, that way you're not sucking up dust of people that you're following on a trail. However, with some of the other mods that I've added, this will also be useful for water crossings. Now, the snorkel on my van is obviously not for anything water related. It's simply for fresh, clean air colder air from higher up. This snorkel will also be doing the same thing, but with the way I have the truck set up with that rear diff breather, it will allow me to get into some pretty deep water. Now there are a ton of different aftermarket snorkel options out there. You do have a TRD option and ARB, but because this is also sort of an aesthetic choice, I went with the Air Raid Tacoma snorkel. It's got really clean lines. I actually blacked out the front grille to get rid of that bright yellow logo. I wanna keep it sort of low key, but also it's very functional at the same time. I haven't done anything else to the air box that that is feeding into, but in the future that might be something that I change up just a little bit to add maybe a little bit more performance, a little bit more horsepower, open the airbox up a little bit and get this truck breathing the way that it actually should. Now if I pop the hood, we can check out the next mod. Now if I just bring you guys up close here, you can probably see the mod hiding behind that TRD Pro Grill coming from Running for Tacos. While I was gone, I had them install an ARB twin compressor, basically matching the van. Now, of course, a big benefit of running big, meaty tires is being able to air down and make your off-road ride just a little bit smoother. So when you're airing down your tires, it's gonna make your ride a lot more comfortable. And then of course, when you get off the trail, I now have a solution to air back up. There are a few different places that you can mount an ARB twin compressor like this. One of the options being back there in the actual engine bay. However, I really like this mount because it's sort of low profile and it keeps the engine bay pretty damn clean. So this is the same air compressor that I have on my van and then you have an air coupler right here. I still need to get a dust cover for that, but they are currently out of stock. Now also to go along with airing down, there are a lot of good ways that you can do it. I personally have an Indeflate in the truck, but Running For Tacos also released some new products right here. So in this nice little leather pouch, they have their own tire deflators now. You can set these up just like you may have seen me done in the van in the past. I have a set of deflators similar to these. You set your desired pressure, you put them on all of your valve stems and you just sort of let the air out, walk around the truck, put them on all of the different stems, 
And then by the time you get your last deflator on one of your tires, the first one is probably already done, letting out your air to your desired pressure. The first time we went wheeling in the truck down in Arkansas, I ended up going down to roughly like 22 PSI, but I could have gone way lower. So once we get out onto the trail, I'm gonna get these things dialed into the exact pressure that I want, and I'll give you guys some more of my thoughts on those in the future. Also, new product coming from Running For Tacos, little digital tire gauge. There are a few different settings on here. You simply hold it up to your valve stem and it has a little light on there as well. You can check your pressure digitally rather than messing with some gauges. And I haven't used this yet, but I will be using that of course in the future. Now, if you wanna check these products out for yourself, you can use code TALENTSI on Running For Taco's website for 10% off of any products that they make. And in some cases up to 5% for a lot of the other mods that we're talking about here in today's video. So next mod, while we're right up front here, you may notice, other than the aesthetics of the snorkel, the front end looks a little bit different, and that is thanks to the Alpha Rex headlights. Now, originally when picking up my Tacoma, it is a 2021, so it does have the really nice LED headlights. However, after looking at the different options, I figured this might be a pretty cool upgrade. Again, kind of aesthetic, but at the same time, also very functional. These are super bright LED projector style headlights, and there's a lot of cool functionality to them. The first thing you'll probably notice when starting up the truck is that they do have sort of a cool animation to them. When I have just the daytime running lights active, you do have the really cool halo around the outside, which my stock lights have, but these do look just a little bit different. And then if I switch into the low beam mode, again, you will get sort of that cool animation to the actual headlights. And then you'll notice all of the projectors in there turning on. High beams will give you this inside light, making it insanely bright. And then also, since I did upgrade my turn signals on each of the mirrors, those are sequential coming from Running For Tacos. The sequential sort of matches the headlights now. So here's a look at the left turn signal, the right turn signal, and of course the hazards. Now one of the main reasons I upgraded to these headlights is simply for aesthetics. The lights probably are just a little bit brighter, gives you a little bit more functionality, but also they are blacked out on the inside. Alpha Rex does have a bunch of different models that you can pick from. If you like Chrome, cool. They have a bunch of different models that include that. However, these, as you can see, are blacked out. I have not done the taillights yet because they are currently out of stock. However, I do have a set coming in and then the rear taillights will sort of match the headlights once I get around to installing those in the future. Now moving around to the side of the truck as we work our way backwards, you probably can't tell that a whole lot has changed. However, a lot of this stuff is either internal or it's just hard to see. So I will do my best at rolling in B-roll here as we talk about the different parts that I have added. So the next thing on the list is something that I talked about in about two of my recent videos. I did do a road trip with the stock gearing in the truck, did about 1500 miles, rode on some trails, and I mentioned that I didn't feel that gearing was necessary, and I still really don't. As long as your truck is relatively light and you're not putting a ton of weight on the thing, the Tacoma with the V6 can push the 35s and the sort of heavy wheel setup. However, if you are really trailing your truck and you have a really heavy setup with steel bumpers and maybe a camper or something like that in the back, then chances are you are going to want to re-gear. I still think there's a lot of misinformation out there online. Everyone is saying that as soon as you put 35s on a Tacoma, you have to re-gear. Coming from my first-hand experience, that is not completely necessary. However, because I'm going to be adding some more weight to the truck, I figured we might as well. So for the gear package, I opted for the Nitro 529 gears. There are really only two real options that you can choose from, and I just went all out for this one because I want the truck to perform a specific way. Now this is one of the parts that I was talking about that it needs to be broken in a little bit. I'm still in the break-in period. I have about 400 miles left to go before I drain the oil, refill that, and then I can drive the truck like I would actually like to drive it. So right now, kind of babying it, letting the gears break in a little bit. I do have to probably hit a trail or two and put it into at least four high. That way I can get all of the gears turning and that way we have a nice fresh break-in and I can go out and use and abuse this truck after that. Now we're getting into the part that might be a little bit overkill, but since we were pulling all of the gears out of the truck and we had everything ripped apart, I figured we might as well add a locking front differential. So I do have the off-road version with the electronic rear locker coming stock on the truck. And since we had everything pulled out, I figured let's just throw in a front locker. 
I'm probably gonna butcher this name, but I believe it's the Harup Eaton locker. This is an electronic locking system and we actually tied it into the same place we tied the ARB compressor into, which is my Garmin power switch. Now, if you guys haven't seen my thoughts on the power switch, I do plan on bringing you guys a full video of that in the future, but essentially it allows me to use my Garmin Overlander and control everything on this truck electronically. There is a manual override switch if for some reason the actual screen of the Garmin Overlander goes down. So it's not like if that goes offline, I can't use my lights, locker, and air compressor. There are physical switches underneath the hood that in an emergency situation, I could activate all of that stuff and use it as it would normally be used. But because I already have the power switch under there, that's where we wired everything into. And again, that's something that I still need to break in. I haven't used the front locker yet. It's one of those things that's sort of an insurance policy. I have my winch. I don't really plan on using it. Chances are pretty high that I will use it once we get out and start wheeling a little bit harder. So I added the front locker because we had everything pulled apart. And once I get around to using that thing, you guys will of course see that in a video and I will give you my thoughts on that when the time comes. Now for another thing that's a little bit hard to see on the truck, again, I'm gonna to try to throw in B-roll here, but we've changed out the cam gussets. The guys at Running for Taco installed the Dirt King Fabrication Alignment Cam Gussets, and essentially what these do is just beef up all of your connection points for your suspension. A lot of times when you're wheeling really hard, if you are bumping into rocks or slamming into things a little bit too fast, and maybe it's something that you didn't mean to do, your alignment can get knocked out of whack, and if you don't have reinforced cam gussets, then chances are you can sort of bend stuff in there and almost every time you get off the trail, you might have to go in for an alignment. Now, I was lucky with my first time wheeling in Arkansas. I did some stuff a little bit too fast and I was kind of pushing the truck to a point where I probably shouldn't have. Luckily, I didn't knock the truck out of alignment. However, with these new cam gussets installed, I probably won't have to get this thing realigned, hopefully ever. Now these are relatively inexpensive parts coming in at about $80 on Running For Taco's website. However, the install time and the labor cost makes it a little bit more expensive because they're actually welding these into place. That way you're getting a really nice reinforced gusset and you can actually see your different measurements on them as well. Again, that's something that's sort of like an insurance policy. Hopefully I will never have to do anything to those, but if anything changes with that, I will of course update you guys in a future video. Now moving around towards the back of the truck, there is one more thing that is kind of hard to see, and the only reason it's hard to see is because of my wheel choice. This is one thing that I think is completely overlooked by a lot of people who build up small trucks like this. You're getting a Tacoma, which is a very small truck, and then a lot of people do a lot of the things that you see me doing right here, adding 35 by 12 and a half inch tires, full wheel setup with a full size spare on the back. My bumpers are mainly aluminum, but people are doing front and rear full steel bumpers and sliders and skids, and they're just adding a ton of weight to these little trucks. Some people are also then adding performance mods to make them a little bit faster. So you're taking a little truck, making it faster and making it a lot heavier, but a lot of people don't do anything to the brakes. That's where my philosophy sort of changes quite a bit. And I, of course, upgraded the entire brake system on this truck to a big brake system. Now, the most common thing that you will see people doing on the trucks is just upgrading the front brakes to a four piston setup. The stock brakes in the rear on the Tacoma, however, are a drum brake setup, which is fine. It's good enough for off-roading and things like that. However, I like to have that little bit of security there knowing that I'm able to stop this truck whenever I want. So we not only upgraded the front to a big brake setup, but we also upgraded the rear to a disc big brake setup. So when people are only upgrading the front brakes on the Tacoma, typically they would opt for a four piston setup. I opted for a six piston setup, bigger rotors. I've got these StopTech calipers in there. They are bright red. However, given my wheel choice, you can't really see them unless you get underneath the truck. Kind of cool, kind of flashy, but at the same time, it is insanely functional. I tend to drive pretty conservative on the road. I'm not speeding around very often because I'm just used to driving the van everywhere. However, when it comes to off-road and dirt trails like forest roads, I like to carry a little bit more speed when it comes to driving on dirt. Now, when you've got a little truck that's a little bit faster and a little bit heavier, you want to stop. So I'm kind of curious why more people don't upgrade their brakes. A lot of people will say that running a disc setup in the front and rear is not going to be as good for off-roading as the just sort of stock setup with the drum brakes in the rear and just the 
stock pistons and calipers up front. I would much rather be safe while driving this truck around, so as of right now, I've noticed a big difference in the brake setup. They feel a lot more responsive. We've upgraded the rotors, calipers, the brake lines. The rear brake lines were already upgraded because of my Tundra suspension in the rear. And so far, this is an upgrade that I'm absolutely loving. And of course, again, I'm gonna be giving you guys more thoughts on that in the future as well. I'm curious to hear feedback from other Tacoma owners out there. Have you guys thought about upgrading your brakes? Have you upgraded your brakes? Maybe you did a four piston setup in the front. I think that's something that's just super important and is often overlooked. So again, stop tech brakes all around. Six piston up front, we did the disc conversion in the rear with a four piston in the rear and this thing is able to stop on a dime now. And now for the final, final part, while the truck was at the shop, we ended up mounting up my Toyo Open Country Mud Terrain, again, 35 by 12 and a half. We mounted those up to my Black Rhino Abram 17s. The reason I went with the 17s was actually because I knew I was going to be doing the big brake kit and you need 17s to fit those big old rotors under there. So we mounted the full size spare up to my Backwoods Adventure Mods bumper which you guys may have seen in part two. And then on the left side I opted for some roto packs. I have a two gallon gas and a two gallon water. I'm so used to traveling around in the van where I have a lot of water so I figured I would switch things up a little bit and instead of doing two gas packs I opted for the water pack so that way when I'm out camping I know I always have fresh water and this will be sort of like an emergency case. I will have other water storage solutions so we will cross that bridge when we get to it. Look at those taillights in the chrome. Ugh, I know, I have to change them. They're coming in soon. Now, just a few more things on the inside of the truck. So one more thing that I've added to go along with the whole performance theme of this entire video was a tune. So we now have the 529 gears from Nitro. We have the front locker in there as well. I did mention in the past my throttle grenade, which is mounted. Right down here, I plan on bringing you guys a full video on this thing too, and you can find links and discount codes for that over on my website. I've absolutely been loving this thing. It makes the truck just drive completely different. So then to go along with the gearing and the throttle controller, I have also tuned the truck with the OV tune. This is something that, again, is very new to me, so I'm not gonna give my entire thoughts on it just yet. The truck is still breaking in with the new gears, so once everything is broken in, and I'm able to drive the truck the way that I want to drive the truck without just like babying it everywhere I go, then I will give you guys my full thoughts on that. The first thing that I noticed already is that it definitely has way better shift points than it had in the past. And that's one of the main things that a lot of people complain about when it comes to the Tacoma. When you're upgrading the truck, especially if you're running 35s, you're going to be sort of hunting for gears, especially while you're traveling uphill over mountains. If you're going way up into the Rocky Mountains, you're definitely gonna notice it. So the OV tune already sort of gets rid of that gear hunting and once everything is fully broken in, I'm really excited to see how the truck drives because it's already driving way better than it was stock. And now just one more thing when it comes to the interior. Again, I have the Miso Customs Chrome Delete in here. I do plan on doing the Miso Custom light kit for these lights here and up top. But if we look down on the floor here on my side, these are molly panels coming from Running for Tacos. And this just gives you a little bit extra storage. So these panels in particular are actually set up for a holster so I can mount a holster in here and have my EDC right there ready to go. I'll probably end up mounting like a fixed blade or some other kind of camping tools on here. Maybe if you're running a radio, you could clip your radio on here as well rather than just like Velcroing it or just drilling into these panels. So I have a panel both on the driver's side and the passenger side and you can find all the links for all of this stuff over on my website. And if you got any questions, just let me know in the comments down below. So I believe that wraps up part three of the Overland Tacoma build. From here on out, again, we're gonna be hitting some trails and actually testing this thing out a little bit more rather than just putting more money into all of the modifications. The weather right now is pretty nice, so maybe in the next week or so, I will be able to get out, call up some of my Colorado friends and maybe go camping a little bit or at least just hit some trails. So if you guys wanna see that stuff, again, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. If you have any questions on the parts installed or anything that is coming up let me know in the comments down below 
And that's gonna be all for today. So huge thank you to Running for Tacos for taking care of my truck while I've been out of town for so long. I appreciate you guys a lot and I'm looking forward to taking the truck out onto some trails. That's all, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.